Hey, what's up everyone? It's Aaron from Blind Eye Games, and uh, today we're going to be looking at a game called Vane, uh, made by Friend and Foe Games. And uh, before we get any further, um, I do want to fully disclose that uh, the review code for Vane was uh, provided to me by Friend and Foe Games, so thank you guys so much for that. Um, and so Vane, uh, Vane is, is described as an adventure puzzle game, and one of the things that I think is super cool and that, that, that Friend and Foe Games did so well with this game is that most of the time when you have an adventure puzzle game, you've got the adventure part of it, and then you've got the puzzle part. One of the things that I love about Vane is that the adventure kind of is part of the puzzle like they're they're connected they they you, you kind of can't separate one from another like yeah the the environments are pretty big and so you can go and you can explore and whatnot but at the end of the day the adventure is <laughs> part part of the adventure is figuring out how to adventure how to get to these different places and what to do once you're there so it's super cool um and so um Something I should say is that because these things are so entwined together, the adventure part with the puzzle part, there will be mild spoilers here. So if you're, if you, if you really care about not knowing anything about the puzzles, maybe skip to the end of the video and and and, and get some final thoughts or something, or just go get the game yourself because it is a really good game. Um, I believe it's only $29.99, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, um, but uh, I was playing it on the, the PS4, um, ran great, uh, but yeah, so, so what we're looking at here is, is, is kind of the intro scene, um, and it's pretty linear, uh, you get dropped into the middle of a storm, you're this, this small kid, um, and you, you kind of run through, and then here is one of the creepy parts. Right, like, dude. So these guys, they're called um, sentinels, um, and so for whatever reason, they kind of, they kind of always are there to stop you when, uh, when you think things are going well. They're there to stop you. But um, anyway, one of the things, like, right off the bat, so these environments, the way that, you, I mean, you can look at it, you can see that they're very polygonal in uh, nature um, but one of the coolest things is how they were able to take the environment and make it change during the gameplay um, and so what you just saw was kind of the the prologue and this game is split into four acts um, each act is is pretty lengthy um, I'd say you'll probably spend about an average of an hour on each act, maybe more, maybe less, depending on uh, how quickly you catch on to the puzzle. Um, and so, right after that prologue, what you see here is you are now in control of a raven. And um, I, I, straight up, one of my favorite parts of this whole game is right here, just flying around. There is something so satisfying about taking this raven and just flying over the desert landscape. It's wide open. It's it, it's it's interesting because there's there's not a lot to see but there's not not a lot to see either um you can kind of see on either sides it's it's kind of you know level landscape or not but if you fly far enough you know you'll find other things you'll find some windmills some wind veins and no joke it it was embarrassing how long it took me to figure out why the, <laughs> why the game was called vain and then i realized oh wind vein right. stupid but anyway so you're the raven and, and you're flying around you're in this desert landscape you're looking for things and um you can see here you know i kind of spotted this uh this watering hole kind of it kind of reminded me of the lion king right uh but i flew down and I, I i saw this button um the button prompt and it was like you know hold hold circle you know and so in this one I landed pretty decently this was my second run through of the game recording this uh, footage and so I kinda got it and you see another button prompt triangle I'll talk about that in a second um, 
but the actually let me talk about that now and then I'll come back to what I'm saying so you land it on the wind vane you hit triangle to to call all your other birds around and that's a major that that's pretty much the major mechanic of the first act is calling the other ravens around you to help land on stuff and make stuff happen and so we landed on the the wind vane you saw it hit triangle the wind vane popped up and it pretty directly pointed at uh a location and so what I did I flew to that location I found a big windmill which you'll see in a second um, did some stuff and it, it became obvious that I needed to find more of these wind vanes um, and so you know I took some time flew around found some more wind vanes called some birds around um, that kind of thing so what I was talking about um, flying in this game flying is easy doing anything else with the bird super difficult which really the only other thing that you can do is uh, land on things I don't think I'm forgetting anything else but you can land on objects and my gosh it is difficult um, because uh, if you were to go back in the video you would see you know I was well above the wind vane when I got the button prompt to hold circle and so what I thought was gonna happen is I was gonna hold circle and it was kinda gonna autopilot me down to the wind vane nah didn't happen like you hold circle and you're immediately like Phew! and it's just you're so slow gosh you're slow um and so i i got pretty frustrated like trying to land on some things but whatever it's small potatoes doesn't really matter much um but anyway so you go through the desert you find all these wind vanes and at the end of it fly over you find this windmill and so the whole point of finding the different wind vanes was to uh, for one get them to pop up but at, at, as soon as you pop up that wind vane all of the other ravens you can see I'm, str <laughs> I'm struggling to land on that that uh, the arm of the, the old busted windmill um, but when you pop open the veins what what happens is that the birds will then go here to the windmill. I guess maybe they're following the wind or something. Not really sure. Uh, but they go. They go to the windmill, deactivate it, stuff happens. So, oh, what was that shiny thing? Is it possible that we need to check it out? I don't know. Probably. Yeah, um, pretty, <laughs> pretty much any time you see anything out of the ordinary in this game, which, I mean, that's pretty standard for puzzle games, you know, look for the out of place thing. Um, would you come down? And you fly into this sparkly, I, I think, I believe that they refer to it as glitter. And bam, you turn into a kid. Um, and so this was my first, like, what the heck is going on moment. Um, but yeah, any time in the game where you see uh, that, that glitter, that gold glitter happen, as a bird, you can fly into it, you'll become a child. Um, why? I have no idea. I don't know what happens. Um, and so, right here is is one of one small complaint. Um, and you can see I fast forwarded, it, or I, I skipped ahead through it because there are some parts in the game where your character just moves so slow, and it, it just it, it takes forever. And that was one of the the parts, right, where you're climbing out of the glitter, you know. Um, but there are some really cool things that uh some really subtle things that happen with the kid in terms of like uh his or her i can't really tell what it is uh but the kid's reaction to things um one of which being uh i think was it right there or was it somewhere i don't know at some point you kind of step out of some water or the glitter and and they kind of like shakes their foot off or something you know kind of yeah i don't know it's the really subtle animations but it, it gives it uh it gives it some cool stuff um but anyway you get out of that first area and now you're kind of just moving forward i believe this is where yeah so so at this point you're in act two and it opens up into a uh, a giant cavern um <laughs> you slide down and and this is really cool too the way that it does this uh it made it very obvious, right, that you're supposed to jump off of that 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 ledge. Um, but it's really clever 
the way friend and foe um, essentially told you what to do without telling you what to do and what they were doing is explaining a mechanic when your when your kid character jumps off of a, a platform that's too high and starts to free fall they turn into the raven and so what that does is it lets you fly around to places where the child wouldn't be able to necessarily reach on their own and so what you just saw happen there is is um again it's, it's kind of setting you up for okay this is the puzzle of this act right you sit on the thing you press triangle some birds fly over they sit and you see their weight kind of shifts this uh, this um, the track kind of shifts the track up some but it's not quite high enough and so immediately we're like all right so that's that's what we're trying to figure out in this act how do we get that that track to come up and um, again you know find sparkly glittery stuff uh, jump into it you know you run around as a kid um, I, I one thing that I, I um, not not exactly I didn't like it but I would have wanted more of a little bit of an explanation as to what the heck is actually going on like the kid in the beginning the kid looked normal right like like there was nothing weird about the kid in the storm and then something happens gets swept up by the storm and now all of a sudden if a bird flies into glitter it becomes that kid I don't know like it, it's kind of weird but you know what suspension of disbelief or whatever you want to call it it's a video game so we go for it um, and so you just saw you push a ball off um, it crashes it creates a new pile of glitter so it creates essentially a new point where you as the bird can go and uh, fly into get to new locations and so I didn't want to cover too much of that just because it is spoilery um, and so this is kind of the exit of act two into act three and uh, we'll let you guys watch it if you notice up there on that little platform beside the ball it's another one of those stinking sentinels and um again they're they're kind of giving a subtle clue as to what the next act is is going to involve in terms of the puzzle you see the ball rolling around um and 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 other kids like you pushing it um but anyway sentinel pops out blocks you off nowhere to go really but to jump off the bridge you jump off turn into a raven and you're flying around um, and right there this game is is beautiful um, it's not too often that we think of that polygonal art style as beautiful it can be cool and it can be cute and fun but my friend and foe nails this art style they nail it um, it's so freaking pretty the way the the Raven's feathers are kind of iridescent and and they shimmer it's just it's freaking beautiful but anyway you fly around you you find this gold ball um, turn into a kid again there's all these other kids glowing down to the ball um, <clears throat> again it's another one of those questions like what is this ball and not to ruin it for anyone but you never find out um, and so anyway I guess it doesn't really matter um, but all of a sudden you realize oh snap we can push this ball and so you and, and your group of kids start pushing the ball and this is so crazy another like as a small time very small time developer myself the way that they were able to make this ball change the landscape as they moved it is mind-blowing to me because they don't just have 3d objects there they have I mean unless unless it's just some sort of particle effect rip, rippling out from it or something not to get too deep into the the technical side of it but the, just the way that the land shape the landscape shifts 
and changes and and you can see it kind of destructing and constructing and it was just it was really impressive and so kind of rolling this ball around is a puzzle all in itself because as you're rolling walls and barriers are, are, are popping up and dropping down so again this was my second playthrough with it um, <clears throat> because I was stupid and didn't hit record the first time so I had to go through <laughs> a lot of the uh, the um, the first two acts again um, and so I kind of I kind of knew where the path was that's why I'm fairly okay at pushing the ball where it needs to go um, and uh, so one thing to note which I'll, I'll talk about this in one second the ball purely as a player caused me a lot of frustration um, because maybe you've you've caught on to it but you, there there was a button prompt that said triangle and you and the other kids can shout at the ball and when you shout at it it kind of like radiates its power outwards and it can affect the landscape in a farther range than it than it could if you're just sitting there um, <laughs> and you can see I accidentally uh, fell off a cliff right there and died so uh, yeah don't jump off that cliff for what I don't know why I didn't just turn into a bird and survive um, but let me talk about this this bugged the crap out of me so you can see the ball um, the ball got close enough to the staircase and the staircase formed and as I'm walking up it you notice the kids fell off now your your character is not strong enough to push the ball on its own that's why the group of kids is there to help you push now what just happened there is as the kids fell off the game didn't stop me from pushing it myself and so I was able to get it all the way up the stairs on my own but then when I let go and I tried to push it again I couldn't move it and then I went back to the stairs well the ball moved far enough away where the staircase disappeared so I couldn't move the ball down the kids couldn't help me push the ball up and so I got stuck I had to restart the level and that really sucks because in this game the only save points are in the very very beginning of the act and like I said these acts are long they're like an hour each so at that point I think I was like maybe 30 minutes into um, the act and so it was kind of like okay uh, it's fine it sucks I'll start over but that was actually the second time that I had to start act 3 over the first time uh, my character got stuck in a wall you know and, and I, I can't hate on that too much because that is actually a fairly common glitch in games um, sometimes your character just bugs out and gets stuck in a wall or between a rock and there's there's nothing you can do about it um, and so again the only reason that, that was a super big deal was because the only save point is at the beginning of the act but anyway restarted I'm on my third run now and so we're going we I finally get the ball to a new area we, we, we push it down the hill me and um, me and all the kids are chasing after it and so immediately we see these uh, well I said we as if the kids are playing too me I, I see these structures and I'm like okay I immediately know what's going on I'm gonna roll the ball close to them the structures are gonna build up and I'm like oh okay sweet it's gonna be a bridge um, and so it takes me a second to realize that dang like the ball is not going to have enough power with the amount of kids that we have to, to build out this bridge and so essentially what you have to do is go find more kids um, and as soon as you find them they kinda run back to uh, to their spot they spend some time shouting at, at uh, different things um, <laughs> and I just I just want to know who these kids are who are the kids who are the sentinels what is this magic glitter stuff and so anyway but I gotta be honest at this point so right here and I, I, I should have looked it up before I tried to do stuff on my own because I think that's what messed me up but we're shouting we're shouting we're shouting and um, I'm waiting 
for uh, you can see actually behind me the bridge had formed um, and at that point I may have actually been able to go ahead and complete the level but I didn't realize it or actually no I'm sorry nope right here you see I had to go find more kids and so I went and I found more kids so that we can shout at the ball again expand its its radius and so at this point I, I, I get what's happening I'm like okay I need to find more kids so that the ball can be more powerful when we shout at it so that it can build that bridge um, and so what happens is when you and the the kids will always stay with the ball that's another point to bring out and so what happens is when you guys shark <laughs> when you guys shark when you guys start shouting at the ball you can actually run away and the kids will start uh, shouting at it or they'll they'll continue to shout at it and so the thing that drove me crazy and I gotta be honest I rage quit after this so you see we're shouting at the ball nothing's happening nothing's happening I don't really know what's going on and so in a second you'll see me turn back into the raven and what I was doing is I'm thinking okay maybe there's some more kids out there somewhere so I jump off the cliff turn into a raven and I go flying I'm like alright I need to find more kids maybe the ball is not powerful enough I don't know I search I search I search I search I go looking and uh, this was nuts I got caught up in the storm at one point I don't know if I kept that part in there yeah but it, it, it like I know it seems like I'm okay and I'm getting out of it but I, I could not see like if you get too far like off the map so to speak it gets real hard to uh, to find your way back but here's my complaint I got back to the spot with the bird or I'm sorry with the ball and the ball you'll see it in a second I get back to the spot but but the ball was just gone it's not there anymore it, just, it had disappeared. I don't know what happened. I don't know why. But I came back. You can see that the, the kids are still standing there. And from what I gathered, I believe the kids are programmed to stay with the ball. And they're not moving. So I think that the, 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 the game thought that the ball was still there. But for whatever reason, when I flew away from it, the ball disappeared. And so it just, I was, I was so frustrated at that point because I had restarted the level three times and again, they're not short levels and the save point is all the way back at the beginning. And so I'll be honest, I quit. I quit right there. I did not, um, I did not actually finish all the way through act four. Um, and what I ended up doing was just going on YouTube. I was <laughs> I was curious to see how it ended, but I was not willing to dump another uh, potential hour into doing the act again, um, just to possibly find another bug and be forced to do it again. I just, sim simply put, I ran out of time. Um, but I went on YouTube, looked up the ending, um, and it's like. Dang it! Like I, I, <laughs> I just wanna, I want an explanation. Like, what is the backstory to all this? What happened in this post-apocalyptic world? Um, I'm assuming it's post-apocalyptic. I don't. Know. It looks pretty jacked up to me. There's obviously the storm raging, um, and I will say there are multiple endings. Um, so if you get to Act Four, Act Four is not super long. So replaying that act is, you'll be fine. If you want to know both endings, you'll be fine. Um, but overall, if, 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 if it weren't for those bugs, I would have loved this game. And even uh, minus the bugs, I did, I, I love this game. Um, I know I mentioned it earlier, but one of my favorite things was just flying around that first uh, act in the desert. Uh, as the Raven and it's just such a beautiful game it's such a good concept it's such a brilliant combination of two genres um, and from what I understand uh, Friend and Foe Games is not a giant team so 
the fact that they did these really cool things with the environment and the art style and the mechanics and everything excellent just excellent stuff the only problem is those bugs um and again i, I did not encounter any bugs outside of act three um i don't know if maybe just the ball made the actual programming of that act a little bit more difficult and there were more variables to deal with more possibilities um i don't know but act three gave me some trouble um but overall again a huge thank you to friend and foe games for uh for um tossing a review code my way um really appreciate it that game was really good guys really good um I definitely suggest it if puzzle games are your thing, if adventure games are your thing, if you like that whole theme of the like end of the world kind of feel, um, definitely go snag this game again. Uh, I played on PS4. Uh, you can grab it off of the PlayStation Network for twenty nine ninety nine, I believe. Um, if I'm wrong, I'll correct myself in the comments. Um, but hey, if you liked it. You know, hit subscribe. Uh, I'm gonna be ended up doing uh, a few more reviews. I've got another review coming up soon of um, a game called Drowning. So subscribe, and you'll be able to get a notification for when that drops. Um, but yeah, thanks for hanging out, guys.